Hi everyone, Trent from Precision Mining here. This video is designed to demonstrate the use of a sequence dependency to create a simple mine top-down rule. Uh, the same logic can be used to create a simple dump bottom-up rule. I'm going to be focusing in on the creation of a sequence dependency, what a grouping expression is, and how to control the level directions. I'm not going to focus on filters at this point. Uh, the documentation will cover that more comprehensively, uh, and that will be a very long video. But for this example here, we're going to look at the animation that's happening on the right, where the excavator is clearly digging uh, in, the wrong, in the wrong direction. It's digging from bottom to top, and we want to create a dependency that prevents this type of behavior from occurring. So that would, we're going to use a sequence dependency to do that. We can use a range dependency, but a sequence dependency uh, is much faster. So we're going to call it mine top down. Uh, by naming it well, it just means that if we use it in uh, the snapshot view, if we're looking for it in a snapshot view, it's easy to identify when it's causing problems. It's a source weights on source because it's a dig type dependency. If you wanted to create a dump type dependency, change it to destination. The source range is going to be all because I want it to apply to my entire site. Now the grouping expression is the first of two key areas to a sequence dependency. You can see in this vertical stack here, what the behavior that it's occurring that's incorrect is that it's digging from top to bottom within the same uh, strip and blocks. It's strip three, block seven, all of these uh, different leaves. So what we're looking to do is create a grouping expression that creates those vertical stacks. This is the most common uh, use of a sequence dependency. And generally what you're doing is you're adding in your X and Y type coordinates, things that change from plan view. So pit, strip, block, easting, northing, uh, area, things like that. So what we use is the text function. The, then we're going to use the pit. We're going to add a separator. You want to add a separator between these just because you can have problems where uh, you have similarly named strips and blocks combining to create strange groups. So just note, yeah, so you have a separator. It doesn't matter what the separator is. By default, we tend to use uh, this double slash. And we want to use everything that's a an X and Y type coordinate. So in this model, it's pit, strip, and block. So that's created the grouping expression here that creates this vertical stack. You can see here in this... Uh, range that I'm using for this example, if I complete the range, you can see that what I'm focusing on, what I'm grouping by is that the area or the pit, the strip and the block, I don't care about the seam, the bench or the stage. So that's the same thing I'm doing here with the grouping expression. So once that grouping expression is created, what we've now got to focus on is the uh, level direction and the order in which these travel. Now, if you've got a reasonably logical setup to this, then you don't need to do much movement with this. Uh, generally, your most, your highest level of detail is at the bottom. So bench in this example, there's more detail on the bench than there is in the seam. So we're gonna just, for the simple example, have the bench at the bottom. And if I run this now, this is actually going to work straight away. So because, the reason for that is because in my levels, my bench is set up from top to bottom. What it means is this level direction is ascending. It means that index zero is the predecessor, index one is the successor. If you're not sure what a predecessor and a successor is at this stage, check the documentation. It refers to how the dependencies uh, actually work. Essentially, the predecessor has to happen before the successor can happen. So within this vertical stack, what we're saying is that in the ascending index, that 170 has to happen before 165, 160 has to happen before 155, and that's the behavior that we're expecting from this. So as soon as we run this, what you'll find is that I've now got a, uh, and my excavator is now digging from top to bottom. Now there will be some other things that this, this dependency doesn't do. Uh, there are some interactions between the seams and uh, when you've got steep seams, sometimes this may not work as intended. This uh, video is just designed to give you something to get started with to, so you can understand a little bit more about how the grouping expressions work. Uh, if you have a particular application of how you need this to work for your site, and uh, sequence dependencies can be very, very powerful. So please don't hesitate to contact us by email or by phone. Other than that, I, I thank you for your attention with the video. And once again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Have a good day.